Hi everyone, welcome back to my next free tutorial Friday. And this week I want to share with you something I think is pretty cool. And uh, I'm working in Sketchbook Pro 2015, which has just come out in the last couple of weeks. And I was lucky enough to get to work with the development team over the last year or so, and so I helped them to create these perspective tools. So if you have our How to Draw um, textbook, I think you'll totally dig what this can do. So you see the little gray, the little dashed line uh, cursor there, and as I move around this single point, which is a single vanishing point and a horizon line in green, you'll see that it's pointing towards that. And if I just draw in the general direction of that, it automatically snaps to that vanishing point. So I could quickly lay out a perspective grid, and if I draw close to horizontal, it will snap horizontally, and if I draw close to vertical, it snaps vertically. So let's say I was going to lay out the back wall of a room. I could do that, and then I could start at the corner, come forward, or go all the way back to the vanishing point. Those two are to go through, so I'm going to add a line converging here. No problem. Let's divide position on the ground. Let's say that that was a square. I could also, let's draw in the uh, horizon here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off for a moment. I'm going to go to the uh, straight line tool, which is there. Yeah, that's about right. And let's go from this corner to this corner. So let's presume I'm going to go way out there. I might run out of space here. Let's do let's do this one right here. I'll take it back. Let's turn back on my vanishing point. Let's draw another line here. And I'm going to say that's a square in perspective. Turn that off. Go back to my line tool. And I want to establish a 45 degree vanishing point. So I'm going to do is draw from corner to corner. And I'm just just some of the grid, grid building exercises from our book. And so there would be my position. And now I can turn back on the perspective tool and I can position it over here, my single vanishing point. And now if I wanted to replicate that proportion coming forward, I go to this corner and I draw forward using that 45 degree VP. And then I can go back to here and I could continue drawing out that grid. So uh, pretty cool, pretty flexible. Um, and let's add a couple of verticals here, there. So you can see it's pretty easy to start building grids um, of your own design. And of course, Right? You can do all sorts of things with that. Not only architecture, but anything you want to do in one point. With the interior of a room, exterior, could be a box, can be the start of all sorts of things. So let's check out some of these other grids. This is a two-point perspective grid. And so if I do this, let's zoom in, <laughs> zoom back, and show you what that looks like. There's the horizon. There's my two points, my right vanishing point. I can move wherever I like. And my left VP. And then we could zoom back in, and we don't even have to see them to be able to use them. Um, I could start drawing, and it's going to snap to those vanishing points, which are just off the edge of my paper. Well, I say paper, but right off the edge of my screen. And it's automatically snapping. So if we draw through, we can see the back corner. Look. It connects. Perfect precision and two-point perspective. Move around the points wherever you like. You can also zoom way out. Let's add another layer. Turn back on the perspective tool. You could, for instance, do a tilted horizon. Right? It automatically snaps level. And you could put them way outside. You could put maybe one close here and maybe one way off in the distance, but you can put them way outside your drawing area, which is pretty great. It's like having those vanishing points way off your uh, piece of paper, for instance, and then reactivate just by clicking there, and then I can just start drawing. So it's, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm so busy right now, I, I must admit, 
that I really want to spend a lot of time working in this, but I really just haven't had the time trying because I'm trying to finish the uh, how to render book currently, which is eating up all of my available time to try and finish that before I head off to uh, do workshops in Taiwan. So there's a two point perspective box. Just that quick, very precise. And you could use this as a separate layer and put a layer on top, right? So put another layer on top and turn off the perspective tool. And then you could go to free sketching. And of course you could just start to sketch within that, right? Using your guidelines and, you know, then just estimating right, transferring points, all that good stuff to help you do some section drawing. So um, that's how you could use it in a very quick and dirty way. I just wanted to show you what the tools are, that they exist, um, and how cool they are. So let's go back here and let's zoom out again. Let's set up a three-point perspective. So new layer, perspective and go to three point and let's see there's my horizon I'll put my horizon very high put my VPs somewhere around there and let's pull that even let's pull that back even further and let's put this third vanishing point which will be my vertical way down there and zoom back in Okay, and start drawing our scene. So if I was going to draw the, let's make that a little bit heavier line weight so it shows up a little better. So if I wanted to start drawing the tops of buildings, for instance, and then they converge far below our line of sight, I can just, anywhere I sketch, if I get it just generally in the right direction, right? it's going to snap to my guideline, right, or my, my point, which if you have tried to do this freehand before, I think this is just so, so cool. So, and then you start building, you know, just dividing up surfaces. Then, of course, you can use your multiplying, you know, it, the whole idea was that this, with a little bit of perspective drawing knowledge, would be a really um, powerful thing. So the idea is that you get the knowledge out of a good drawing book, which we happen to have just finished one, and then you can just use the ability to snap to vanishing points, right, to great effect. So a little multiplying exercise there to start getting the foreshortening as it runs down the building. Um, now we're back in three point and I'm, it'll just keep snapping to my grid really really cool um, there are more things coming of course um, in this program for the future which I won't spoil but um, I think it's heading in a pretty awesome direction to be able to quick sketch with such precision especially fantastic for architecture but really for anything to lay out a good perspective grid so not to stop at three point um, because I tend to draw when I sketch freehand, I tend to work a lot in curvilinear perspective, which, as you know, is like a fisheye lens or how the human eye sees something. So we actually created a five-point perspective grid, center vanishing point here, which if you want to make it feel like a camera lens, just leave in the middle of your illustration area, then a vanishing point above, vanishing point below, and a left and a right. So five vanishing points to make a curvilinear perspective grid. So this would be like a fisheye lens, so we have distortion and or any lens or even the human eye where we see, but we don't really recognize the distortion because we see within our cone of vision and we scan and link all those things together. But let's just look at this one. This, this is just fun. Make some nice big lines here. You can see. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, I'll do some here first. Oops, I think I just drew one right there, heading off in the wrong direction. It gets a little bit trickier when you get really close to horizontal, the, sh the shower, shallower the angle. Let's zoom back in here. 
now turn it back on there's my VP whoops when it goes green you don't want to grab it so you, to start a drawing there start when it's not green and then it will snap if it's green you're gonna actually move your grid okay so some more lines now let's grab the ellipse tool which we've also spent some time improving and say I wanted to put an ellipse here what's cool about it now when you activate it and you spin it it has a ghost line for the minor axis so that makes it super easy to line up on your guidelines and then we have a degree change here in and out after you establish the minor axis and then size is over there so if I wanted to put an ellipse along that line like the wheel of a car I can and then it also will tell you the degree below which is kind of cool because if you were going to print this and then use traditional um, ellipse guides over the top you would know which ellipse guide to grab just write the same number next to it so let's position that how do I know when it's the right degree well um, that is the knowledge part that comes in our book and basically it's wherever the this guy would create a tangency here on the right and on the left that would if I drew a line through it go to my left and my right vanishing points and if I drew a line across the top and the bottom if I drew a line through those tangency points it would create another grid line for my vertical grid so I'm gonna guess it's probably right about there I'm gonna draw the ellipse I'm going to get rid of that I'm gonna turn back on my perspective grid draw across the top I'm going to draw here so even though I'm working in curvilinear perspective the same perspective rules apply now this is the only part that it gets tricky right I can't just use a straight line across that so I have to turn off this to find the exact center the foreshortened center this one's gonna be pretty close because it's almost going to my vanishing point so this you get you can use a straight line tool and just estimate or you can just freehand and just curve these guys a little bit so that's pretty close there's my center then I turn back on my perspective grid. So I see that my center line of my ellipse touches tangent at the top, tangent at the bottom to the left and right to my horizontal lines, and it intersects my vertical coming up from the center. And if I look from here, also hits the middle of each side. So a circle inside a square would touch the middle of each side. Let me just go to red here. So if I go freehand this, whoops. So it would touch, all I did was basically build a square, like so, just freehanding a square and a circle. We know a circle inside a square touches the middle of each side. That's how you know it's the right degree. I double checked it by drawing a square around it after, and it touches the middle of each side. Bingo. It's the exact right degree on the right minor axis for this curvilinear perspective grid. So that's the kind of cool stuff you can do with the knowledge applied to the uh, new tool sets. Um, there are also a couple other things I'm not going to take time to get into today. Uh, there's the ability to do some awesome gradations. Um, you can also do, uh, there's a, a light brush, like a color dodge or glow kind of brush. So um, it's become a much more complete sketching and rendering program. Um, but I, my favorite thing, of course, is the perspective tools. So um, give it a try. I think uh, I'll put a link to it so you can go check it out. Um, but pretty powerful stuff. And um, I'm loving the improvements that they've made to not only these grids, but also this ellipse tool which I find really awesome now because I can see the minor axis and then I can adjust my degree change my size etc pretty sweet improvements so I'm really excited uh, when I get some time this summer uh, and how to render is off to press soon I hope I will get back into doing more of this kind of work and I'll share more of these uh, real drawing demos using this tool on the channel so thanks for tuning in and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.